Hello and welcome to the Vicarage Study at St John's Church in Poole. Uh, a particular welcome if you're new to St John's and watching us online. What we say we're about as a parish is knowing and sharing the love of Jesus and I hope that's your experience as you spend time with us today. Um, by the time you watch this I will be an absentee vicar and this is where I, I will be. I will be in Keswick as I am each summer and uh, it's a wonderful place physically speaking it's uh, as you can see right by a lake and uh, surrounded by the four tallest mountains in England and it's a great place that's physically but spiritually it's an even better place because it's been the uh, the base of the Keswick Convention where Christians gather to look at God's Word and to think about its impact on their lives for the last 150 years or so. Uh, so we do that every summer. So I pray that uh, you might feel, feel, find something of Keswick. This year, of course, the, the Keswick Convention is not happening in a physical way. But the, the plus side of all of that is that all of us from wherever we live do we just have to turn on our computers uh, to uh, participate in what's called virtually the Keswick Convention. Uh, it starts on Monday the 27th and it runs through to Friday the 31st. And uh, it, the details will be uh, in my email that goes out with this. So uh, I, I pray that you will uh, find something there for yourself as well. This morning what I'm going to do is to give a short Bible reflection and lead us in prayer and uh, then encourage you to sing the three songs that I'm suggesting in my email. Remember that your listener is God as you sing. Today we're going to look at our begin our summer series on uh, Matthew's Gospel looking at today at some of Jesus' teaching in parables. We're in Matthew 13, where Jesus says six times that the kingdom of heaven is like dot, 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 something in particular. And there are five of those sayings are in our passage today. They're about the mustard seeds, which seems nothing special. But then it becomes a big tree where all can shelter in its shade. A bit of yeast, which again seems not very special, but uh, it works in the dough and makes it rise. A hidden treasure, something most valuable. A merchant on the lookout for fine pearls, again, something most valuable. A net being cleaned on a beach by a fisherman. A reminder that God is judge and that separation is real. With that in mind, let's uh, turn to the text this morning. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 31. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it's the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and brought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, Therefore, 
Every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a storehouse who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. I wonder, what's the biggest thing in your life? Maybe family, maybe work, maybe hobbies or sports. Uh, they're all good things. But I hope it's God and his kingdom. Of course, that doesn't necessarily compete with those other things. Indeed, those other things can be part of the purposes of God, where we get caught up into what he's doing in all our, our family and work and hobbies and so on. I want to focus today on one aspect of the kingdom of heaven, how it's the most valuable thing, that point that Jesus makes repeatedly in the passage. Two of those sayings look specifically at this point, but actually all five uh, are consistent about it being the most valuable thing, God and his kingdom. Look at verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. It's so valuable that when the man finds it, he buries it, hides it again, and then sells everything he has to buy that field. That treasure is more valuable than anything. And look at verse 45 and 46. Um, there's a story here about a merchant uh, dealing in fine pearls. He finds one that's so great that it's, it's worth selling everything he has, everything else, to buy that one pearl. That pearl is more valuable than anything. Jesus is saying that God and his kingdom should be that special to us. Of course, it doesn't always seem that special. The mustard seed, back in verse 31, doesn't seem like anything special until it grows into a tree and the birds come and shelter in its shade and so on. The yeast, in verse 33, doesn't seem like much, but it changes everything. Jesus changes everything. And let's not overlook that parable of the net that Jesus finishes with, verses 47 to 50. It's often at the end of a person's life that uh, we sit down and consider what was most valuable to them. I've had lots of conversations like that, getting ready for funerals. Jesus' point in this parable is that there's a separation, and it's real. The contrast is is sharp and the choice that we make is therefore a stark one. The division is between those who are willing to be swept off their feet by God and commit themselves to what he's doing in the world and those who try to keep him at a distance who resist him or reject him. The question for us here is what kind of fish are we? After these five sayings, Jesus stops and asks, Have you understood all this? And surely what he said would give at least reason to hesitate before answering. But the disciples seem very sure of themselves, don't they? They, they dive in and they don't just say, Well, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but they just say, Oh yes, we understand. I wonder, how much did they really understand well, look again a bit at that question over the next couple of weeks. The passage ends with a rather strange saying, verse 52, that saying about a teacher uh, who brings both old and new treasures. In this context, Jesus is probably talking about uh, the old treasures as the wisdom of the ages wrapped up in the Old Testament and the new treasures as the surprising things, the shocking things actually, that he taught, which are now of course in the New Testament. So what does this all add up to? Jesus is saying of course that the kingdom of heaven is more valuable than anything. Not, as many people reduce it to, an interesting idea that we might look into a bit more when we have some time to spare not 
something to admire from a distance, like maybe in a museum where someone else has taken the trouble to find it, clean it, uh, cared for it and put it on display. But rather, Jesus is saying, the kingdom of heaven is ours for the taking, if we'll just receive Jesus into our lives. Will we? Let's pray. Lord, thank you that uh, you and your kingdom are so wonderful. More wonderful, more valuable than anything. And we're reminded of that in this text this morning. Thank you that, uh, Jesus, you're teaching us today. Thank you for what you are teaching us. We each have different things to thank you for. We take a moment to lift those things before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sorry, Lord, for the times that we've kept you at a distance. Sorry for the times when we've resisted you. Sorry for the times when we've rejected you. A lot of things come to our minds when we say sorry. So we take a moment to lift those things before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord, prompt us, teach us through uh, these sayings and so many others from Jesus. Prompt us to invite you in. Prompt us to go from half understanding to full understanding of you and your kingdom. We each have different things to ask for for ourselves, for our church, for our world, for those we love. We lift those before you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we'll end this morning with the Lord's Prayer, as we often do. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Remember, it's his name, his kingdom, his will, his power and glory. That's what we're reminded every time we pray the Lord's Prayer. See you next time.